sort of half working. But uh, half working is better than not working. <laughs> that was the first lie. Welcome to another video. This one is uh, a bit different from the usual ones and it's a bit longer as well, given that it's uh, a collection of videos I've taken over the last five months documenting the process of the work I've done to uh, Nikita Mylada. I had a lot of mishaps, um, adult life gets in the way, it wasn't a priority so it's taken much longer than what I thought it would. It'll also be apparent fairly early on that I'm not a welder and I'm really learning how to weld as I do the job. So um, yes, I fully understand that my welding's crap. It, it can only ever improve, really. So that's what you'll um, you'll be seeing. Okay, so you've seen this place before. This is the driver's footwell. Um, and as you have seen before, there is a lot of rust here. So you can see where the rust is actually penetrated through. Um, now in a previous video, oops, sorry, in a previous video, I hadn't quite made my mind up about this this floor section because of all the pitting. Um, nothing has changed since then, which is bad because it's been a few. It's been at least two months, I think. So, yeah. God, it's bad to think that uh, lockdowns lasted this long, but, you know, these must. Anyway, um, I still haven't quite made my mind up about it. So, what I'm thinking about doing is, or oh, I can draw it now, just cutting... What I'm wanting to do is cut a lot along there, cut along here, cut along here, really, it's just where the sill comes down. Um, there's a, as you can see here's some spot wells because I think I don't know what's underneath that. Um, yeah, some spot wells here. So cut that and weld it because I think it's a bit of a gamble that this is all right this is strong enough I haven't never in any of this part been able to um to pierce the metal where it's pitted so if you can't do that with with the screwdriver there is some strength left there probably not as strong as it should be but again, I think it's 1.2 mil steel. Or I've got a bought 1.2 mil steel um, to go in here. So it'll do that bit. It'll also do that bit. Oh, you can't see that. Sorry. So it'll do that whole sort again. Cut it. Probably try and remove this. But I want to make that a smaller patch as I can get away with. Seems like that's already been already fixed once, but um, does it? Maybe I don't know. Um, so yeah, cut that. That's only a small patch hole that I do because more more or less the whole of the the driver side sill is good. It's in remarkable condition. Um, I mean yeah, there's a bit of you know. Seam sealer coming off there, but you know, just, that's fine. We're well here, it just needs most of this on the footwell needs um grinding back. Um, again, not, not a big problem. Now, before I do any of that, there or there, I want to apply well, I want to clean this area up first and see what the rust remover does. I'm not using rust converter. I want to get rid of this rust because I'll be putting primer on it, be putting 
um, a stone chip on there. Um, don't need to do that, but you know, for soundproofing, and also some dynamat or equivalent underneath, which sticks to everything. What I've sealed, what I've sealed that, I don't want it to come back, which is I think is fair enough, isn't it? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get the general light now. Right, to give it the best chance possible. Right. To give it the best chance possible, I've already hoovered all the, the loose stuff. Um, the next thing I want to do is um, get some brake cleaner and just spray the bits that I'm gonna I'm gonna be painting, which is montage cleaner. Sorry, montage cleaner, but um, there's no rocky training montage here, is there? Right. Was a lot like a gel. See, angle grinder with a disc, um, welding mask, which will double as a grinding mask, and my line. What you can see is that we now have this cut out, this square cut out. Um, this obviously it's welded to underneath, but as you saw from previous videos, that the chassis arm is um, right on itself or is getting there. But um, so what I'm going to do. I'm now going to go underneath to see where of cutting um, and how best to get the rest of it out. Okay, so we're back under again. Um, so as you can sort of see a hole, oh, as you can see, that's the hole. That's where we've cut. Goes up to the jacking point, which is still attached somehow. So obviously what's happened is that I've gone through here, which isn't any, which isn't a problem. And um, gone through ferrying board to there. Now, as I said, I have a replacement for this. The full part, which will go to, if I wanted it, go to the end here. I didn't particularly want it to go to all the way to the end. Um, but I think, hmm, I think I might, I should do really, shouldn't I? Okay. 
had a bit of time lying down and thinking what to do. This is the plan. All right. I'm going to carry on cutting this this part up to probably there on the chassis arm. So cut all of that and then cut along here like that. Same here, chop that. That should then drop this whole panel. Then carry on cutting this chassis arm. Um, I don't want to go, sorry, then start cutting this chassis arm. It's probably about there, right? Cut that there, then cut or remove as much, well, remove this all here. So that comes out, that means then there's only this bit left and a little bit of the, the jacking point. Same thing with that. I'm gonna sand it down to um, at least where the where well until I can find um, spot wells, drill them out, then pull it out that way because and then that should be all right. After that, put in the new floor panel, new bit of the floor. Sorry. Uh, get the part that I've got. Prepare this area from here. Here, I'm gonna hammer that back down. Um, because I think it is fair. It is solid. Like there's no, there is no issue there. I don't think. Um, but obviously we'll we'll take it as we'll we'll take it as we go. Right. I've um, I've improved upon the uh, Flintstone performance pack by making the hole a bit bigger, as you can see. Um, where did I put the? Oh, there we go. So that's supposed to come out. Basically. All of the um, all of the the sh chassis arm here was absolutely full of muck, and this is the one that's going to go on instead. I think I'm going to get find my calipers. So the one thing I wondered. Was how thick the the floor is on the ladder, so we wonder no more. One point two mil, give or take a few a few things here or there. What about the what about the chassis arm? Two point four. Apparently, the new one. About one point six. So some mil less thick. However, if you can look, obviously. Get rid of this not swarf. No, the swarf didn't make much difference to that. Still a layer of stuff, so uh, dark. it's near enough. Be right. As you can sort of see, this, as you can see, I cut down all of this, which means that. I think, yeah. Ooh, scratch the paint doesn't really matter. So I have that this much left on the car. Um, 
but I'll show you something else that I found or that I've, that I've thought about that I want to do instead. So previously I was talking about how I would cut up to here and just take this off, leaving the floor underneath it. However, I'm thinking now it might be worth more and more time just to cut cut this little bit out here, leaving this here because I think I still don't know what I'm going to do. How to get that out? Probably have to draw some stops, spot wells, and go in with a chisel. But I thought at least then if I cut to here as much as I can. Yeah, it's alright, strong enough. Weld the new floor from here to there. I can then weld the chassis arm in the same place. Oh no. Actually, I'll take the chassis arm off completely, um, and then weld it to the to the leg, and then um, that that would that means then that I've created a new weld here to replace that. I mean, this is not particularly rotten, but it is buckled here a bit. So just to save save messing about, take all this out here. All of this so that the chassis arm comes out down all together. Cut that little bit more of the floor. Um, weld the new floor on. Then put the, the chassis arm on top of it. And then weld all that. And then that's good. Good to go. There we go. I think that's as far as I'm going to go with the cutting. Um, I've got underneath here. So got you know part of the um the sh the chassis arm there. Um underneath well I'm sorry on top I can see the spot weld so I'm gonna draw that out and then see about coming underneath here and just with the with a with a cold chisel this direction just starting to prise the metal away from uh, the, the chassis arm from the uh, from the floor um, same same with this really um, see what I'm doing there because it's sort of awkward to get the, um, the angle grinder in there uh, so I'm going to try and bash the crap out of it to be quite honest with you I'm going to drill there. Was it there? Yeah, sorry. There is the one I want to drill. And uh, I'm going to do something with this. I've got to hammer this down because I think what happened was someone tried to jack the car from the chassis leg and it bent it, buckled it, which has obviously done this to the floor. Um, so I'm going to smack that back down so it's at least level. where the um, chassis arm goes into that's not too bad itself I'm going to have to clean this up obviously around here and here um, before I do any welding because um, I've well and cleaning up the bits of, uh, of stone chip that I missed this though was hidden so obviously, if where's my arm? There it is. Um, so the arm comes straight along to here, yeah, and then the little jacking point, which that bad boy is hiding this. So now that also means 
which is annoying me because he's part of the seal now. If I wanted to keep the shape simple, I could just cut along here, very close to the to the sill, and back again. Uh, this is now the front wheel arch, and all the way up here. Think about where my hand has gone. Hand is. Say from about there, I'd want to cut all of that anyway because it's all pretty. Because there's this um, rubber gasket that went in between there and the wing. I would think it would be a good idea to start from here. I'll tell you what, that's, that's the second choice. So, right that two. First choice would be a bit further here to about... No, bugger it. Cut from there to there. Because I think I still think that's all right. From what are you, I used the, an endoscope inside. It looked all right inside, apart from around here anyway. So yeah, do that to that along there. If there's any more, well, we'll just have to see, won't we? Um. I messed up. Hmm. What's the black stuff you wonder? <sighs> Cavity wax. That's a bit of angle. Uh, I've lost my sharpie. Tell you what, I actually screwed up. Right. So, I screwed up my line. Sorry, this is hard to, it's hard to film. Cold chisel time. So I cut, cut there, and I screwed up the line. Went close and close to the freaking sill. Like an idiot. So I'm left with that. I'm just going to... That, that's fairly sound actually, so I'm just going to hammer that back in and weld that to wherever it needs to be welded into. Um, I need to clean off, obviously, the the muck here, but I think I'm going to leave it for today because uh, I'm needed elsewhere. But um, carry on tomorrow with it, I think. So once I clean that up, I'm going to let it harden really, that <laughs> might be easier to get off. Because I need to obviously um, spray well through primer on this bit because I'll be drilling holes the other side. To weld into the floor panel. So the floor panel will go from here to there to there. A little bit of a right angle there but that's all the rot on this side other than the what's on the inner sill in there really didn't think i'd i really thought the silver was better than it but than it was on here also odd stuff it's like in, in, they put insulation or something or someone at some point um put it so obviously that was quite fun to wonder where the smoke was coming from when it was obviously part of inside here so again that's another reason i just want to let this cool down okay so it's a new day i'm on dolly just to um you know try and flatten out that ridge um that's occurred but i don't think i think it's good enough it's, it's not really going to cause much much um issue i don't think um now I don't have cardboard, but I 
do have it have um, some thick wallpaper line and stuff. Um, just a little bit thinner than cardboard you get from um, what you call it, uh, um, cereal boxes. But I don't eat cereal, so I don't have any. And it was only like three pound a roll for twenty meters. If this doesn't do the whole car, um, I don't know. I'm still if I get some, if if some's left over, I can decorate the house with it. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just do a quick um, template. No, I won't call it CAD. Now, maybe lad. I don't know. Lining paper aided design, but um, yeah, I'm just gonna make a um, rough sketch of the underside of the hole. Um, I've already cleaned off most of the oil, um, whatever the cap, whatever they used to seal the cavity with, um, and it's messy stuff as you can see. So it's everywhere. Um, but yeah, so I'm just gonna open this up, cut a little bit out. Do the usual thing, and then um, we can, I'm gonna apply it to the bit of steel I've got. A few hours we've gone from this. Um, don't know where to put it. To this. To that. Um, it's a bit sharp around the edges. I'm gonna just. With the angle grinder with a flat disc just do the edges i've got to do the same underneath the car as well and then um, i'm just going to hold it in with a magnet to see if it fits it covers most things except it's a bit a bit too long here and got a bit of a gap um think i can weld that together hope i can weld it together anyway but um, I haven't checked on the side yet. But so it looks all right. Um, just need to take a slither off there, really. I think. But I want to check underneath now. Uh -huh, start again. So it has been nearly two months now since I actually since that last clip where I cut the. A bit of steel for the floor of the floor of the larder, um, and nothing has happened. Adult life gets in the way and it uh, derails uh, the best laid plans of my cement, doesn't it? So basically, I went to I went to um, to weld it, and the welder broke. So that bit at the beginning of the video was a lot of a lot of bunkum. I don't know what happened, but it just stopped working. So I uh, ended up having to save up and buy a new welder. If it hasn't become obvious already, um, I know nothing about welders, but here it is out of the box. I didn't ask for gas, gas, there's a bracket there for gas. Angry Pixies live in there, in front of it. I think that's it. Clamp, plug, the gun over there. Just gonna load it up and attack the floor now. Okay, so there's a few days since I last came in here and you can see that the welding here is um, full of what the grass makes the grass 
grow green in Texas. Sort of crap. So, um, yeah. Not good. Um, okay, so there's several things that I did wrong here. Um, after I went on, went around asking a few people, you know, why was the world so crap? Um, we'll start off with, with, with um, the most obvious thing. But everything is obvious in hindsight, isn't it? Um, the patch panel that I've made isn't good enough. So I went into this thinking I'll do a, a butt weld. So basically two sheets of like that together. Um, and weld the seam around it. Could do that. Like, you know, that's fine. But um, I was told actually, really, that's a quite a difficult thing to do especially if you've never done welding before which i should point out i haven't um so what i'm gonna do instead is a um a lap weld so got the juggler it's like a little crimp thing and it just puts a little step in the in the, the steel so the new patch now i'm gonna have to pull that out um cut a bigger section and then do the the um, the step, okay. Um, so that's the first thing that I'm going to do differently now for this. Um, the second thing is with this, the gaps are too big, so you can bridge a weld across. Um, again, difficult if you've never welded, um, like I was finding out. So again, with the lap weld, that takes away that need of. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say it removes the need for um, being tighter with the gaps because obviously like, there does need to be metal underneath that lap, uh, underneath the lap. Um, but it does mean I can get a stronger weld um, on the first time, well, for a beginner, put it that way. Um, so the idea is on the, on the seam or the edge that I put into the steel, put some holes in along in along it and then do a thing called drop weld uh, like a spot weld, basically can't think of the name of it that's really bad um basically it's just like the hole goes onto the, the, imagine this is the new bit of steel in my hand put it there put the hole in, in the new steel not in the old steel so it goes like that weld the hole there so it goes brings those two together and then go around the edge both on top and underneath um we just tack wells and then it's like putting like i think it's called the, the, what to do with the dime so it's just like, like one 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 following all the way around um the other thing though is that the, the steel on the car isn't clean enough i never cleaned it properly enough um but then again i did leave it for a month to thinking that oh, I'll be all right. No, I think from from what I've realised since is that if you're going to do the job, like pulling out pulling out the steel like this, you sort of have to weld it there and then. Um, otherwise, it, obviously, the steel bare steel will react with with the environment around it, which is what's happened here. Um, it's also where I put that um, rust remover. So obviously it's got a lot, you know, there's residue left over off of that. So um, I'm going to attack that with a, a wire brush. No death all. Um, and that's what I need to do with that, with that steel hole, with that um, steel. Um, the other thing though, moving on to the machine, is that you can see that I don't, well, I can strike an arc, but it, it, it doesn't keep it going. Um, so I've got to mess about with the um, with the with the settings on the the welder because um, I'm on min one at the moment, and I think the wire feed isn't fast enough. So I've got I've got that to to change to change up. So um, that's what we're doing now. Uh, the other thing is that I'm using gasless. Because I had, I have, well, the old welder I had was gasless, so I had gasless wire. Um, but apparently, 
should get some gas. The, the machine can take it and um, what's it? And the regulator. So they're going going like that. Goes into the back of the um, the welder. I have to change the polarity to, so it uses normal welding wire, which I've got as well. Got loads. Got loads of stuff that I shouldn't have bought. Hey ho. Um, do that. So and use the gas instead. Apparently, you'll get a better weld. Um, although saying that, if you don't know what you've done wrong in the first place with the weld that you've done. You know, it's just one of them. So the post, post more continues with the welding and um, oh, there you are. focuses. Well, so there's a lot of, I don't know what you would call it. As you can see, and there's like obviously there's holes in the, in the, um, in the wells. Right there as well. However, I was doing some bits right, but again, it looks like it was starved or something. Did a bit of a penetration coming in, especially on the bottom bit, but not enough. Um, so uh, that's now the just that's just the. A test um, which I'm gonna bring the welder out and um, hopefully have a play with it uh, just just to get the gas down and then once I know that's configured cor correctly um, yeah once I know this that the welder there is configured as good as it can be make another template to do the the fancy thing that I need to do. Not the fancy thing, but like the the, uh, the flange stuff. So, let's start at the back. There's a regulator and the gas piped in as much as I can as much as I can see it. Well, that pipe's going somewhere. Um, you have to adjust the polarity. Um, so apparently, according to the book, these welders were are shipped to accept flux core. Yeah, flux core out the, out the box. Um, but I have since changed that now to to MIG with the gas. That's all there. Oh, and uh, the wire is different as well. Some stuff that I've had lying around. Comes with two rolls anyway, so that isn't that isn't a problem. Front of it, um, I think it's better to just stay like this for the moment. I've increased the speed, so now I'm gonna give it a bit of a test somehow um yeah i'm just gonna give it a bit of a run uh down there um just use the car as a bit of a uh workbench because yeah my workbench is full okay so after uh some cock ups um basically the machine uh i thought this new wire was 0.8 mil and it's not it was 0.6 so I had to change the, the wheel around but yeah that's where I started and then I'm managing to do some 
do some things here. Oh, it's really hot. And as you can see, I'm straight through. Well, not straight through, but you know. I think given... The first attempt, and now the second, I'd say I've improved a little bit, but not enough yet to um, put the plate in the hole. So I'm going to leave it for tonight. done this evening is use um, the, the wallpaper lining again to mark out the, the a template for, for the hole again which left me with this All right so as you can see hopefully um, this one I put the paper underneath the car and drew the hole uh, you know where the hole was but underneath there's obviously I put a bit into the sill is what I did underneath so this bit was more fed than cutting and all that sort of stuff loud pipes save lives got the wicked children um, then I left with this bottom so basically all that means is that this now will sit inside the, the vehicle um, as you can as you've seen seen here now this is me trying to put a step into the into the steel there is there is a bit of well you can see it there but it's not much of one um that's because the, the hand juggler i have is for one mil steel not 1.2 so um it is what it is but it'll be fine as long as it's a strong it's a strong weld it's all that matters because to be fair, it's only ever going to be an MLT tester down there, and everything's subjective, isn't it? So now, what's left is tonight. I'm going to just pop some holes in this steel and around the here, and also along here as well, because obviously the um, inner sill, I'd say comes in this then goes on top of it so i want to zap yang into that um so that will then hopefully mean tomorrow is a case of prepping the area this so obviously with this i think it's a bit grubby but uh just bring it back to what is a polished metal i've learned that it's polished polished it should be um same with both sides of the of the vehicle um inside not too too bad but underneath obviously there's still a little bit of um under seal on there so i'm gonna look forward to that one um and then start laying some wells down oh, it's very bright oh. i was filming something else earlier so i changed the exposure um yeah, so I've cleaned up the hole and I sprayed it with some um, well through primer because obviously with the nature of the patch which has gone missing. Is it gone? Oh. Should have did the same too last last night. Um, this part is obviously the two bits of metal are going to be together. And I'm going to weld through them. So while that's drying in there, I'm going to carry on putting holes along the inside here where the, where there's a line. The line indicates basically where the where the body where the hole is. The problem I have got is space, as you as you know. Anyway, this is um, a restoration done on the cheap, both in terms of space, money, and talent. Um, and it's pissing it down outside. It's been on and off really. And obviously if I've got bare metal, I'm not going to be 
not going to be um, bringing this outside or using electric tools. That's my little workbench. <laughs> um, yeah, it's not really, it's barely wide enough for me and I've lost weight. Um, so yeah, that's that's where I'll be drilling, drilling my holes in now. There we go. Panels in. Some of the holes, I think there, might be a little bit too far um, that way. Uh, that's my own fault. But um, this is still most of well, most of it is going to be over the the parent metal. Um, so now what I've got to do, I'm going to start on this side. Um, start on this side, probably hold down that side um, over there, push it down, and just do a few tack wells, and then carry on from there really. In terms of it being flush, it's not too bad actually. Oops, so they are. A little bit of a fire, I think. We can see these holes here. So getting penetration at least. Seems fairly skookum. Um, but the top side is a horror show. Some places there blown through there as well um, yeah just trying to figure it out I think I've got the that clamp in the wrong way but, um, not that there's much point worrying about it now but we'll carry on can't find the uh, the microphone so well, here is the, the finished uh, patch he says no it's in a big fucking hole here ah, yeah, I can sort that one don't I I've got that bit to do yet but I can't and I can't get the angle grinder in there doesn't look good but it does a job Right, I finished. I I finished. In there. I don't know what you're looking at, but I'll, I can't. I can't switch the camera around when I'm in this mode for some reason. Um, so basically, the floor the the, the floor is is welded now. Um, both sides didn't need to do both sides, but. I thought sod it might as well, seeing as I was under there, and it looked, I think it looked neater with a badge weld than it did with just two bit, a little bit of steel flapping down underneath it. Um, what I've done this morning now is um, just clean back the welds enough, that, not too much because I obviously I want to keep some of the metal left that I've added. Um, but now um, I've prepped prepped it for the next part because obviously there's a, there's a chassis arm that, that needs to go underneath underneath along with the jacking point this is the wrong one it's the wrong side but as you can see because it's been welded on I've um, sprayed it with this stuff it's supposed to be all right although other people don't not, don't see the point but obviously it's if I'm cutting holes in these, so I'll be cutting holes along here, here, maybe there, here, maybe one or two there, I think. Yeah. And a few along there and along there, as well as the back, then welding it onto the floor. Obviously, I'm not going to see see these sides again, so I'd like some protection underneath it. But that's the wrong one anyway, but that's going on the other side, so it doesn't really matter. As you can see... The chassis on that I showed. Oh no, actually, I think it's the right one. Yeah, ignore me. The chassis arm. The lift will go under here, onto this part of the frame. 
and the other two are there you see you can sort of see the marks of the old one still that's just i left that there so i knew where i was marking it up that's a bit of under seal doesn't really matter about that all of this obviously i'm gonna start welding welding onto to the not obviously none of this welding is pretty but do you know what it's strong i've got penetration um as you can see so as long as it's strong um, it, i don't really matter i mean the only person who's going to look at this is the mot man and as long as you can't put your screwdriver through it then there's no problem is there i've been trying to work out um what i've what i had left to do and um basically what i remember doing now is uh drilling all these holes in the um the chassis arm it's gonna go on to the to the car now so i'm gonna weld this and then see how i get on because i think i might need to do a bit of a seam weld along the edges although out of the factory this is how they're um how they were mounted uh, put onto the car um these little holes were were drilled in and spot welds all the way through but um i don't think it'll harm anything if i just weld along the sides there i'm gonna go underneath the car Right, so it's day 351 of welding this section of the car. And um, when I last left it a week ago, I was uh, just knocking back the rust here, because obviously there was a little bit of a hole. But as you can see, I'd be as well, that's really, this. all of this part is really thin. The sill here, isn't um thank god it's just this little part here um i've had a look on the other side and it has a similar part on the sill which isn't hasn't been gone through yet um so what i'm gonna do hopefully is just to instead of instead of just cutting along the sill there or the seam sorry that little bend i might be as well to just try and rem t try and take this out all together and weld in a weld in um, a thicker part like I did for the floor um, slightly more work than what I was thinking because obviously I've a, I thought it'd just be a little bit of a square there but it's not is it it's a section basically to the foot here of the um, of the floor to the top of the sill and to the the a pillar Near enough of the car. Um, yeah. Oh, oh, bloody hell. Not ideal. But, do you know what? Um, it needs doing really, doesn't it? Interestingly, all of this was just. I just sanded it with this thing. So thin.
that's where our little pinhole is here. As you can see, there's another little one there as well. So this bit that I'm already going to cut out, I need to cut more along the lines of maybe this arch. No, ignore that. Um, for reasons that become apparent soon. Or maybe you should. Don't want to take too well. I don't want to take too much out. So I'm just going to use this line and then come out this way. And I think around here, not that I'm going to do much with a pen. I think it's not too bad. So I'd want to stop cutting about there roughly and similar to what I how I um, made the repair panel for underneath I'm going to do a butt weld not a butt weld sorry a lap weld along here so it's coming up all the way up to here anyway down I need a better pen don't I just follow the line um, down this this line here, then out a bit. Doesn't really. I don't know whether it might, makes much of a difference if I do uh, too sharp of a bend there or whatever. Sorry, whether it. Don't know whether it makes a difference. But um, yeah, this part of the the car, as far as I can see, isn't attached to the wing here. There's a rubber rubber thing that goes all the way up along here, which was on which was located here, and was trapping all this rust, as you can see. So um, not too fussed with that, but I'm considering whether the wing needs to come off at some point before I uh, do too much here, because obviously the repair panel that I'm going to put on. There's only, what's that? God knows how much. Uh, it's not. It's not going to be too thin, uh, too too wide anyway. So I'm still going to have this space. So when I do come around to getting this off, because I think if it's as bad here, it's going to be bad in behind here as well. Because um, this is a com this uh, from what I can gather, the repairs here and inside the car are what killed a lot of ladders in the UK, and I can see why. Because it's a ass of a job to do. But I'm just going to cut this out now and uh, see how we get on. So as you can see, I've cut um, cut the bit off and. Uh, can see where sort of a meeting spot for various other parts of the car. Um, that's all along the part of cut. Um, but this part here, uh, I think I need to access from where this is hiding. So the wing will need to come off you sort of get to know what you're working with and taking paint off and things and little stuff and you saw in a previous video i can't remember which one um might be the russian metal one but i'll put it in anyway um this car has been um been sprayed in the uh in the past and especially when it came to here you can see um you can see the filler that's on there you can also see here that the wing the wing is rusted and this is probably all filler anyway so I know that when I take take the wing off it's gonna be more metal work or I just bite the bullet and buy pattern parts and do that but I'd like to try and rescue this as much as I can first someone on the larder group 
said they had something. Not, f not for me. A bit close. But I'll show you what they had. Front wing for the left and the right, and in there the front valance. So because of that, what I'm going to do is going to change. It now means that the front of the car, um, the front valance, which you saw earlier in the previous video, is all rotten, especially especially around here. This place is tight, as you can see. And I was thinking about, you know, trying to repair it, but the more you look at it, the more someone has already tried to repair this and put a load of filler on it, which is no good. So that also means that if I get the torch on, it means that I can cut the wing off, this one, and uh, not worry too much about um, how to get it off, which then means I can cut that little bit out, and then I can see in behind here, this section of the of the chassis, what needs um, what needs welding or attention. Thing is, because obviously this is the space I've got, which is considerably less space when they're all that shit. Um, on the other side, the door doesn't open all the way. So, which this is an issue because the wing, you need to take the door off because the wing is welded in, in there. So the plan is now to cut this wing about there, um, just so I can see what's inside it. So once we get to a point where the whole of the, the car is structurally sound, I can then roll this out, pop the doors off like I should have done before it we went in, um, and then finish off the um, bodywork like this so like the wings can be welded on. Um, and such like um, but no doubt there will be questions or comments about the welding I'm not a welder never said I was a welder not that that's an excuse even in that little patch that I've done there on the second attempt the second attempt was always much, already much better than the first attempt and my plan is or my hope is that by the time I go around clockwise into the car so like obviously I'm doing the, the front wing in uh, front of the car then the um, passenger side and go around the back like that so by the time I get back to do the um, I can see, show you to do to do um, where the, the seat route is, is attached to that welding will be better than this one as long as there's an improvement in welding as I go along I think that I think that's all that can be asked for really the weld is strong, um, strong as it's going to be on a nearly 50 year old car, um, not that I'm planning on crashing it, so, but anyway, um, I won't leave it so long for the next video on the ladder, um, the weather's changing, I mean it's already gone cold today, uh, and it's only November, so, um, you know, and plus we have a lockdown haven't we, so it's not as if I'm, you know, <laughs> I'm uh, drowning in offers of going to the pub or anything like that. So, anyway, thank you for watching. And um, yeah, just thank you for watching. And I'll see you again. Thanks again for watching this video. If it's your first time here, please consider subscribing and liking the video if you found it helpful. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you again soon.